In this presentation, we will understand the basics of regular expressions. We need to understand the basics of regular expressions because in the next lecture, we will write the program where we will use the regular expressions and hence it makes sense to have some basics of regular expressions beforehand so that there will be no problem in understanding that program. So, let's get started with this lecture. Let's see the topics of this presentation one by one. The first topic is introduction to regular expressions. The second topic is the search function. The third topic is the match object. The fourth topic is meta characters. And the last topic that is the fifth topic is special sequences. Let's get started with the first topic that is introduction to regular expressions. So, what is a regular expression? The regex or regular expression is used to check if a string contains the specified search pattern or not. So, the regular expression allows us to check whether a string contains a specific pattern according to our needs. For example, we can validate email addresses using regular expressions. We can check for the at the rate symbol in the string so that we can validate that the string entered by someone is an email address. In the same way, we can check for passwords. We can check for the length of the passwords. We can check whether the password contains a special character or not. In this way, we can search for a specific pattern in the string and regular expression allows us to do that. We will learn this in a moment, how to do all these things. But now, let's look at a simple example which helps us understand how regular expressions can be used in real world. So, let's look at a specific example. In order to use regular expressions in our programs, we need to import the RE module. In this way, we can import the RE module. Import followed by RE. This allows us to import this module which consists of regular expressions related functions. These functions we can use in our program. After importing the RE module, we need this line txt equal to hello world. Let's say we have this string hello world and we want to search for a specific pattern in this string. And here this txt variable is pointing to the string. Now we can work on this string using this txt variable. Now, let's say we want to search for a specific pattern in the string. Let's say we want to search whether this string starts with hello or not. If it is the case that this string starts with hello, we will continue and print some message on the screen. For this purpose, we need one function from this RE module which is called the search function. So, we need the search function to search for a specific pattern in the string and we can take that function from this RE module. We have already understood what a module is. A module is simply a collection of functions. We can use functions accordingly in our code when we want to perform some operations. In this case, we want to search for a specific pattern. For this purpose, we can use the search function which is available in this module called RE. And with the help of dot operator, we can access that function from this RE module. This is the line of code we need. If RE dot search, so here we are using this search function from the RE module. We need this dot operator to access this function. To this function, we need to provide these two arguments. The first argument is this string, which starts with this symbol caret followed by hello. What does this mean? Caret symbol means starts with. So, we want to search whether this string starts with hello or not. For this purpose, we can pass this string as the argument to this search function. The second argument must be the string which we want to search. So, here we are passing the txt variable, which means that we are passing this string as the second argument to the search function. Now, search function is capable enough to search for this pattern within this string. Here, we want to search whether this string starts with hello or not. So, this symbol indicates starts with. I hope this idea is clear. 
If it is the case that this string starts with hello, then this search function will return the object which is also called the match object. We will understand what a match object is in a moment. But right now, you just need to understand that if there is a match, then in that case, the search function will return the match object. Otherwise, it will return none. N-O-N-E, none. If it returns none, then we know that this entire statement will be replaced by none. And none is equivalent to false. This means that whatever statement or statements we write within this if construct will not be executed in that case. So if there is no match, then the statements inside if will not be executed. If there is a match, if we receive an object from this search function, then that is equivalent to true in the if construct. And this means that we can execute the statements inside if construct. We know that this string starts with hello. Therefore, the search function will return the match object, which is equivalent to true in this if statement. Hence, within this if statement, this print function will be executed. This means that this message will be printed on the screen. The given string starts with hello. So we will get this output on the screen. I hope this idea is clear. Now, let's move on to the next topic which is the search function. We will now understand the search function in details. So what is the search function? We know that the search function searches a string for a match. If there is a match, then it returns the match object. Otherwise, it returns none. That is what I have written here. Returns the match object if there is a match. Otherwise, it returns none. So, we can use the search function in the if construct and we can print some statements accordingly if we want to. Also, it is worth noting that it only returns the first occurrence of the match. So, it will not return the subsequent occurrences. It will only return the first occurrence of the match. If let's say we want to search for a white space and if there are multiple white spaces in the string, then in that case, it will only return the first occurrence of the white space and not the subsequent occurrences. Now, let's look at one simple example to understand how search function works. First, we need to import the RE module. Then, let's say that we have this string hello world and txt variable is pointing to the string. After this, we need this print statement, print within these parentheses, re.search and within these parentheses, these two arguments where the first argument is backslash s within single quotes and the second argument is txt. Here, we want to search for this pattern within txt or we can say within this string. Backslash s is a special sequence which indicates the white space character. So, the search function will return a match if there is a white space character available in the string. As we can see that the white space character is available, therefore, this search function will return the match object corresponding to this white space character. Now, if we execute this program, we will get this output on the screen. Here, we are receiving the match object and this match object has some information for us. Here we can see that match equal to single quotes with white space is returned. This indicates that the match is a white space. And here we have span equal to 5 comma 6, which indicates that the starting position of the match is 5, which is correct. If we count from here, the index of this character is 0, the index of this character is 1, the index of this character is 2, the index of this character is 3, the index of this character is 4, and the index of this character which is the white space character is 5. So, this is the starting position of this character. And we are receiving here 5. This means that the starting position of the match is 5. And we know this that we need to subtract 1 from here. We will get 5. This means that the white space character ends at position 5. Not at 6, but at 5. I hope this is clear. So, this is how the match object looks like. And this match object is returned by this search function because there is a match. I hope it is clear 
how the search function works and what it returns. Now, as we know that search function returns a match object if there is a match, let's look at the details of what a match object is. So, let's move on to the next topic that is the match object. The match object contains information about the successful match of a regular expression against a string. So, we know already that match object contains information about the successful match, like it contains the information of the start and the stop value of the match. Now, let's look at one example to demonstrate how we can use the match object to extract some useful information. First, we need to import the RE module. Then, we need this txt variable which is pointing to the string hello world. After this, we need this print function to print the information returned by the match object from this search function. Here, we are using the same search function with these two arguments backslash s and txt. And after this, we are using the span function. This span function returns the tuple which contains the information about the start and the stop value of the match. So, if we just want the start and the stop value of the match, we can access that information using the span function. We need this dot operator so that it can be applied on the object returned by the search function. So, in this way, we can access the start and the stop value of the match which we can use further in our code whenever we want to. The output of this program is 5,6 which we already know. So, we are receiving this tuple because of this span function. I hope this idea is clear. So, with this, we are done with this topic that is the match object. Now, let's move on to the next topic that is meta characters. So, what are meta characters? Meta characters are characters with special meaning. So, these characters have some special meaning. So, let's look at some meta characters which are available for us to use. We will see some of the meta characters and not all of them in this lecture because in this lecture we are dealing with basics of regular expressions. This lecture is no way the complete lecture to understand regular expressions. Regular expressions is a big topic to deal with and hence it requires multiple lectures. Therefore, in this lecture we will see some of the meta characters which are frequently used and mostly we will see those characters which we will use in the program which we will see in the next lecture. The first character is this character. This indicates a set of characters. To this we can pass a range of characters and this allows us to check whether a string contains at least one of the characters which we pass to this. So, this meta character is quite useful. After this, we have this meta character which we have already seen. This indicates starts with. This is the caret symbol which we can use before the string. Similarly, we have the dollar symbol which indicates ends with. So, this indicates starts with and this indicates ends with. So, we have these three most frequently used meta characters and we can use them accordingly in the search function. For example, we can pass a to z within these square brackets. This indicates that we want to search whether the string contains at least one lowercase letter. So, if it is the case that the string contains at least one lowercase letter from a to z, in that case the search function will return the match object. Otherwise, it will return none. So, in this way we can check for lowercase letters in the string. We already know how to use the caret symbol. We can type caret symbol followed by hello to check if the string starts with hello or not. If a string starts with hello, in that case, we will get the match object from the search function. Otherwise, we will get none. Similarly, we can type world followed by dollar to check whether the string ends with world or not. If it is the case that the string ends with world, then we will get the match object from the search function. Otherwise, we will get none. So, these are some of the meta characters available for us to use. There are many meta characters, but for now, we just need to understand these characters. So, let's move on to the next topic now, which is special sequences. So, what is a special sequence? A special sequence starts with 
backslash followed by a single character. So a special sequence always starts with backslash and it must always be followed by a single character like backslash s which we have already seen. So we know that backslash s is a special sequence and the search function in that case will return a match when the string contains a white space character. This is small s not capital S. Capital S has a different meaning. So if we use backslash capital S, then in that case, the search function will return a match when the string does not contain a white space character. So here we have does not. This is what we need to keep in mind. Similarly, we can use backslash small d and in that case, the search function will return a match when the string contains digits. If we use backslash capital D, then the search function in that case will return a match when the string does not contain digits. I hope these special sequences are clear. There are many special sequences, but this is all we need to understand for now. So I hope with this it is clear what is a special sequence. Now, we are done with all the topics of this lecture. We have understood what is a regular expression. We have understood what is a search function and what it is capable of. We know that the search function returns the match object and we have understood the match object in details as well. Also, we have understood what are meta characters and what are special sequences. So with this, we are done with the basics of regular expressions. And we are ready to move on to the next lecture where we will discuss the program which requires us to use the regular expressions. So, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this lecture. I'll see you in the next one.